Stamp out sleeping sickness, our commitment to community care. In many parts of the world, people live hand in hoof with their animals, and sometimes by improving the health of the animals, we can also have the opportunity to improve the lives of their owners as well. That's why, when in 2006, our attention was brought to an emergency situation in Uganda involving products and know-how we jointly had access to, we decided to help the Ugandan government in its struggle against sleeping sickness. An often fatal disease spread by tsetse flies was spinning out of control. With the two forms of the disease, a chronic one, Gambienzi, after Gambia, which predominantly affects West Africa, and an acute one, often fatal, Rhodesienzi, after the former Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, threatening to converge in three districts just north of Lake Victoria. We describe this as a time bomb ticking, as if this convergence took place in Uganda, there was nothing stopping the combined disease spreading to all other parts of Africa. Over the last century, hundreds of thousands of Ugandan citizens have died from sleeping sickness, a horrible parasitic disease that takes over the body of its victims until, as the name implies, they have no energy, appear sleepless, and finally die. Our initial program involved a collaboration between the two universities of Edinburgh in Scotland and Makerere in Uganda, together with the Ugandan government and the private sector in the form of SAVA and IK. The two universities had recently proven that the reservoir of trypanosome infection in cattle, transmitted by tsetse flies, was the real threat to human health. It was a massive task to mobilize people and resources to treat 220,000 cattle in very remote thick bush and papyrus swamps. We are therefore delighted to report that the first intervention was a resounding success that highlighted what we did right and what we need to do to get things right in the future. Infection rates dropped from 23.4 to 4.4% in cattle and whilst comparative data is difficult to gather, all the health workers we spoke to talked of many fewer cases of human sleeping sickness. A sampling of the treated animals was carried out three months after the initial treatment and another followed after nine months and we now have the results. The three month sampling shows that we've achieved a massive reduction of the parasite across the board. Overall we can see a reduction of close to 70%. The SOS plan had four major aims. The first was to treat the cattle which had shown to be the major disease reservoir with either Viridium or Veriben B12 LA. The second objective was to implement a monthly treatment with Vectorcid to kill ticks and tsetse flies and therefore prevent reinfection of clean animals. The third aim was to educate farmers and communities to understand the benefits of spraying their cattle with the insecticide on a regular monthly basis. And our final objective was to make low-cost sustainable treatment with Vectorcid available to farmers through use of a restricted application protocol, spraying mainly the legs, ears and belly of the cow, where over 85% of the bites occur. At a cost of only 100 Uganda shillings, or less than 6 US cents per animal per month, most farmers told us they are willing to pay for the treatments. When that program came in, it has actually helped us so much. Even uh, right now, if you screen animals at random, you may find that the percentage is down. He said, when these people were not yet here, the animal was not good concerning tesis fly infection. Now, as these people came, there was a total reduction of tesis fly infection. If you make it that simple, people will actually understand and they'll make sure that uh, if I use this product vector seed, I'm not only protecting uh, my animal, I'm also protecting my family. So money I would have spent treating uh, family members, I can use it for other uh, business ventures or even taking kids to school. I think what phase one of stamp out sleeping sickness has given us several lessons. First, it has given us an opportunity to prove that the private sector can comfortably work with the government, communities, and the higher training institutions. This has never been a case of appreciation before. Two, 
the campaign has also clearly shown that communities, once sensitized, they are more than willing to bring the animals for cleansing and spraying, and spraying at a participatory level of responsibility. Then the third, and probably a result of the two, is that sleeping sickness can actually be reduced tremendously and if the program is sustained, can be eliminated. For six months, the newly qualified vets, known as the 3V vets, have been working back within their communities. They have now recruited several community animal health workers who were loaned funds to purchase pumps and now provide both chemicals and spray services to local livestock owners. Siva and iCare provided seed capital to fund these operations, but the intention is that the young vets will eventually have to sink or swim by their own efforts. A few months after the intervention, it was clear to the community that the products used added good health to the animals. And when the, the, stu the, the, the students went back for more interventions, the community started to demand for the services. And many animals had gone through a process of weight gain. People earned more money from the animals in the markets. And because of that, they started asking for the drugs that were used by the Makerere students. And when they asked to demand for the products, when this, the, the three V vets went back, the farmers were more than willing to pay for the drugs specifically that were used in the intervention. In recent years, a huge gap in the delivery of veterinary services had developed where government withdrew through constraint of finances, but the private sector failed to step in due to lack of perceived demand. The key question now is can these young vets sustain themselves through selling these products and services? And if so, can this model be the basis for tackling the Tetsi menace in the rest of Uganda and Africa? I think the same approach should be adopted. And uh, other places are already taking this up. Because um, they're, they're seeing the results. They're seeing the results. They're, they're, they're taking it up and they're seeing the results. So it, it's something that needs to, to spread out the rest of the, the country. All those districts that have not been exposed to this should actually learn uh, to use this chemical for restricted application and also to treat the animals so that the sensor fly will be wiped out eventually and the sleeping sickness will also be out of question and of course even the, 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 the Nagana and the cattle will not, will not be a problem anymore. Despite the tough challenges that were faced, the SOS initiative seems to have touched the community from grassroots level to the top government structures. Results have been very encouraging. We have done a lot for us. We are very grateful. I pray and really those from where the help is coming and you who are taking your time to come struggling on the way in spite of all the difficulties. God may take you to heaven and long life.